Hey guys, this is my MPP Solar LV6548 inverter. This is a 6,500 watt inverter that I reviewed and demoed about three or four weeks ago now in a separate video. Quite a few questions came out of that video, some good discussion points. Uh, in particular around the ground neutral bonding inside this inverter and how that would work when this inverter is connected to a standard electrical panel. Uh, now I made some comments in that video about the screw inside the inverter which could be removed to break that ground neutral bond. And uh, since that video, I have reached out to MPP Solar and I have asked them about this question. And uh, they had wrote back a response that says, if you would like to remove the neutral ground bond in battery mode, uh, you need to remove the screw marked in red on the main board. And they provided a picture here, which you can see. Now, all of the case screws are circled in red. So I think we can conclude that the screw they are referring to is the one with a pink check mark, which is the same screw I noted in the video. Uh, and they have said in that email that it is safe to do so. Uh, so I think that response directly from MPP Solar uh, answers the question as to whether or not you can safely remove that internal ground neutral bonding screw. And that brings me to the next point, which was many people had asked why you would ever even want to remove that screw, you know. Before I get into that, I want to start by saying that, you know, my opinions in this video are going to be specific to this inverter, specific to U.S. split phase power, and specific to... Uh, completely off-grid. I do not have the AC input connected to this inverter, so this will only ever operate in off-grid mode. Additionally, I am not an electrician, so if you have any questions, I would suggest contacting a licensed electrician. So in a typical residential electrical system, you will have a ground neutral bond, which is a jumper between the ground and the neutral, or it could be a single large bar in your service panel where the grounds and neutrals both land. Uh, this will typically be located in your main service panel of your home, or in some newer or upgraded systems, it could also be located in your meter box if you have one of the newer meter boxes that has a circuit breaker or some sort of disconnect built in. Uh, but for most of us, it's probably going to be in the main service panel. So like I said, I've got my inverter set up here. And you can see on the bottom there, I have a piece of EMT conduit that comes out and goes over to this, uh, I think this is a 100 amp panel. The purposes of this video, this is the main system panel. This is not a sub panel. Because remember, there is no AC input connected. This is an off-grid inverter, so this is the main panel off of this inverter. Uh, but you can see my cabling comes in here. It is THHN. I have a black for the line, a white for the neutral, and a green for the ground. Uh, these come up to the top here. You can see the white goes into the neutral bar. Uh, the black or the line goes into the first bar on the left. And I have a smaller ground bar at the top here where all of the grounds land. Additionally, you'll see I have a piece of copper wire coming from the neutral bar and going up to the ground bar. This is the ground to neutral bond. Now, I could have just landed all of the neutrals and the grounds on this single bus bar here, and I wouldn't have even needed this side ground bar because this is actually an add-on component that I purchased separately. Uh, however, I wanted to keep them separate in case I decide to use this panel for any other inverter testing. Additionally, I lost the screw, which is supposed to go through this hole right here, which will bond this bar to the actual case. Irrelevant for the purposes of this video, but I know somebody's going to call me out on it if I don't say so. And then you can see I've got two 20 amp breakers here. Uh, one goes up to this outlet over here, and the other goes down to a separate outlet down here. Uh, now the question that was asked is, why would you want to remove the screw from this inverter and then make the bond over here, when you can simply keep the neutrals in the ground separate and leave the bond in the inverter? And here's the problem I'm trying to solve. If you leave the bond screw in this inverter, you have a neutral ground bond in the inverter, obviously. And if you have your panel connected like this, where the neutral and ground is bonded, now you have a bond in two locations. You have a bond in the inverter and you have a bond in the panel. So that has now turned the green ground wire that runs from this panel to this inverter into a current carrying conductor. And that's very bad. That ground wire is supposed to be a low resistance path for current to flow under a fault condition you know, from any appliance, any panel, back to the source, which is this inverter. You never want to have your ground wire becoming a current carrying conductor. And that's the reason why we only have the neutral ground bond in one location. This becomes an issue because many home panels are set up like this. Like I said earlier, they have a ground neutral bond in the main panel, or you may have one at a service disconnect by your meter box. Now, the easiest way to integrate an off-grid inverter like this into an already wired home system is with a transfer switch. And this is a popular option here. This is a Reliance six circuit transfer switch. Um, this is UL listed. It's typically used for generators, but it doesn't mean uh, that it has to. And basically the way this works is your toggle switch here. You have an option for generator and an option for line. So if the switch is down, you're feeding power from the line or from the grid. 
If the switch is up, you're feeding it from the generator or your input at the bottom of the socket here. So this allows you to switch individual circuits between your grid input and your generator or your inverter input. Now, of course, some people might have what's called a critical loads panel where they move the circuits they want specifically off grid to that critical loads panel. Then they'll run the input to the inverter and then to that panel. So that's a separate topic altogether that I'm not going to get into in this video. So let's take a look at our transfer switch here. Now you'll see when you open the cover, we have a red, a black, uh, and a white wire and then we've got a screw down here for the ground so what you would do is your generator or your uh, alternate AC input could be inverter any other power source you would connect your leg one your leg two your neutral and your ground your large wiring harness that comes off of this panel will have a red and a black lead for each of these individual circuits so we have six circuits here we'll have 12 leads that come off six pairs of red and black then we'll have a ground and a neutral uh, so the ground will land on the ground bar of your main panel. The neutral will land on the neutral bar of your main panel. And if your panel is like mine, where they're combined, uh, both these leads will go to the same bar, and there's your ground neutral bond. So what you'll do is you'll go to your main panel, and you'll pull the wire off of the circuit breaker uh, for the circuit you wish to switch the transfer switch. You'll take the red wire, and you'll connect it to that circuit breaker. Then you'll take the black wire, and you'll splice that onto the wire that goes out to the branch circuit. So when your switch is in one position, it will pass current through the red wire to feed that circuit. When your switch is in the other position, it will pass current from the input wires to feed your circuit. Perfect solution for taking individual circuits off grid. However, it does not switch the neutral or the ground. So if you try to wire a transfer switch like this to a panel with a neutral ground bond, and you have a neutral ground bond in your inverter, again that's two locations with a neutral ground bond, you've now turned this green ground wire into a current carrying conductor which once again is very bad. Uh, so that is the reason why I was most interested in whether or not that neutral ground bond screw can be removed. I hope that makes sense. So once again if you are using the AC input to this inverter everything I said will not apply because you have the neutral ground bond in your AC input source. So you cannot have a second one in a separate panel. This will be treated as a sub panel in those cases and the neutral and the ground should remain separate. And as always, if you're doing anything related to electrical, it should be getting done by a licensed electrician. So please don't take this video as advice. If you think I missed anything or you think this is done incorrectly, uh, please let me know why. I'm very interested in learning. I'm still not sure if I'll pick up a second one of these inverters or not. This ground neutral bond thing was one of the big setbacks I had of this inverter. So knowing it can be removed and you can wire it in this method, uh, does completely fix that problem. I do know that Watts 247 is currently out of stock of these inverters and it sounds like they are no longer taking pre-orders. Uh, so yeah, if you found this interesting, don't forget to hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.